This is a podcast to touch you how to do the vector application practice problem. So we're going to start the one about the hurricane that's traveling 14 miles per hour in a direction that's 35 degrees north of east. So I'm going to put 14 miles per hour here. And, and so this is uh, 35 degrees, I'm going to pin the work, 35 degrees north of east. So I went east and then I went north, so that's the 35 degree angle. But it asks how far north will it have traveled in three days? So let's talk about what they're asking. How far north would be the distance? And I'm going to put in the y direction because north is up. You could also put it in there if you want. And the time that it gave me was three days. So I'm going to put t equals three days. And since the velocity is measured in miles per hour, you can't use days. So I'm going to have to say in three days, one day is 24 hours. So three times 24 is 72 hours. Now the formula I'm going to use to find this, since I know velocity, distance, and time, the formula I'm going to use, let me get my pin to right, it's going to be velocity equals distance over time. But in order to use velocity here, everything has to be in the same direction. So this is the distance in the y direction, time in the y direction, and velocity in the y direction. Well, I can't use this 14 because the 14 miles per hour is going diagonally. So I'm going to say that the velocity in the y direction equals the distance in the y direction over the time in the y direction. You could also say that distance in the y direction equals velocity in the y direction times time in the y direction. Now, to get the velo uh, velocity in the y direction, we run out of room here, so I'm going to come up here. The velocity in the y direction is this green arrow right here. So this is the velocity in the y direction. That's the opposite side. Well, whenever you try to find the opposite side, we're going to take the sine of the angle because sine equals opposite over hypotenuse. So to find the opposite side, it's sine times hypotenuse. So the sine of 35 degrees times the hypotenuse of 14, that's what equals the opposite side, which is your velocity y. And then I'm going to multiply that by the time of 72 hours. And when you put all that together, you get a distance in the y direction equal to 578 Point one miles. Uh-oh, I don't know why it's going up there like that. That's weird. So it's 578 miles. Once again, what I did is I took velocity equals distance over time. All these have to be in the same direction. So when I cover up D, if you cover up D here, it's velocity times time. The velocity in the Y direction is just going straight up. So I know the hypotenuse, I know the angle. So I'm going to take sine of the angle, that's this up here, sine of the angle times the hypotenuse, 30, sine of 35 times 14, times the uh, time, and that gives you 578. Now in the next one, it's asking you how many days, so I'm going to put a little T here. That's what I'm trying to find. Does it take to travel 2,000 miles west? So my distance in the x direction is 2,000 miles west. And so therefore, I have to use the velocity in the x direction. Well, if you come back up to that uh, triangle up here, the velocity in the x direction is the adjacent side. So to find the adjacent side, I'm going to use the cosine. I'm going to bring this back down here. Oops, 
sure why this pin does that. I think it's because I'm accidentally right-clicking. So the cosine equals adjacent over hypotenuse. Let me see if I can get rid of this. Shoot, hold on. So if I'm looking for the adjacent side, which is this red side up here, I'm going to take the cosine, so the adjacent side equals the cosine 35 times the hypotenuse of 14 miles per hour. It goes again. And so that means that the velocity in the x direction, which is the same thing as the adjacent side, is equal to 11.5 miles per hour. But that's not what I'm asked to find. To get t, to get the time, you got to remember that velocity equals distance over time. So time, if you cover up that t there, time is distance divided by velocity. So I'm going to put in distance in the x direction divided by velocity in the x direction. So my distance is 2,000. That's meters west. My velocity is what I answer. I got up here 11.5 miles per hour. And so my time ends up being 173 hours or 0.9 hours but that's not what they were asking here it goes again on this it was asking how many days well since there are 24 hours in a day i can say 24 hours here in one day divide that number by 24 and you end up with the number of days of 7.2. So let's talk about what we did. They wanted to know how many days will it take to travel 2,000 miles west. So I have two unknowns. I have the unknown time and the unknown velocity. The velocity in the x direction was the adjacent side up here. So to get the adjacent side, I took the cosine times the hypotenuse. That's what I did right here. The cosine times 14 gave you 11.5. Now I only have one unknown, which is the time. Well, time equals distance over velocity. So I put in a distance of 2,000, the velocity of 11.5. And the answer was 173 hours or 0.9 hours. Divide that by 24 hours in a day and you get 7.2 days. In the next one, I have a satellite going across the United States at 18,000 miles per hour, but it's going in a direction 65 degrees south of east. Didn't draw that quite to scale, but this is 18,000 miles per hour. Really, really, really fast going diagonally like this down here. Okay. And it wants to know how much time. So I'm looking for T. Is that much time there? Does it take to travel across the U.S., which is 3,051 miles from east to west? So they give me the distance in the east to west or the x direction. Well, in order to get time and a given distance, I'm going to have to know the velocity in the x direction. Well, the velocity in the x direction is this red side up here. That's the adjacent side. And whenever you try to find adjacent side and you know the hypotenuse, you can use the cosine. Once again, cosine equals adjacent over hypotenuse. So to get the adjacent side or that Vx, that means that the velocity in the x direction has to equal the cosine of 65 times the hypotenuse of 18,000. So your velocity in the x direction ends up equaling 7,607 
miles per hour. Well, that's not your answer, though, because they want to know how much time. So I'm going to come up to that um, equation that we've always used for velocity. Velocity equals distance over time. Well, to find the time, you cover up t here, so it's time equals distance in the x direction divided by velocity in the x direction. So the time equals distance of 3,051 miles divided by the velocity of 7,607 miles per hour. The miles cancel out, and you're left with a time of 0.4 hours. So if you think about this, this satellite right here is traveling from Alaska to Florida in 20 minutes. That's how fast the uh, space station actually goes. So lastly but not leastly, now they want to fi find out how far south. Well, if you're trying to figure out how far south, that means you're looking for distance. South is in the y direction, so that's what I'm looking for here. Will it have traveled in the time it takes to go across the U.S.? So the time is the same that we have up here. So the time is 0.4 hours. So again, where I got that was the time it took to go across the United States, which is right there. So we brought that down. And to get the D and the T, I'm going to have to know the velocity in the Y direction. Okay, we're using this formula again up here. So velocity equals distance over time. So let's uh, look at this velocity uh, up here. In the y direction, it's the green side. This is the velocity in the y direction. That is the opposite side of that um, triangle. So here you can use it's the opposite sign. It's going to be the sine of 65 times 18,000. Let me show you where I got that. If you take the sine triangle, or the formula for sine is opposite over hypotenuse. If you're trying to find the opposite side, it's sine of the angle. So here's sine of 65 times the hypotenuse. Was so the hypotenuse was 18,000. So you multiply all that together. So I get the answer of 16,313 miles per hour. Now I'm not done yet because it wanted to find the distance. Well, if you look at this formula up here, distance equals velocity in the y direction times time. Now, I'll give you the distance in the y direction. Well, your velocity was 16,313 in the y direction. And your time was 0.4 hours. I should say miles per hour up here. That's probably a good way to do it. Miles per hour. Oh, shoot. So this hour cancels out with that hour, and you're left with 6,525.4, but 25 miles. So in 20 minutes, you will go 6,525 miles. What I want you to do now are the problems on the back of this worksheet, which are called the vector application problems. So these were the practice problems. You're going to do the back side, which is very, very similar to this. There's one about an airplane at the very top. So vector application problems is what you're doing.